Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is part three of the Fusion 360 foam cutting series. So I highly encourage you to watch parts one and two uh, where we did the design. And um, what we're doing is we're doing a very simple design for a fuselage for an L4 grasshopper. So in uh, part two, we saw how we got the design out in two parts because it was a bit bigger than the foam cutter to cope with. And then I'll show you how to get the dimensions so what we're going to do in this video, we're actually going to make the parts. So in the second video, I show you, showed you how we could use setup sheets to get the sizes of the foam out we needed. And I'll put them up just so you can uh, refresh your memory of them. So that basically gives you the sizes of our foam. So what I've done, I've already pre-cut the foam blocks. And these, were, these are the sizes given in the setup sheets. Um, and as you can see, we've got, I've got two. So the plan is to cut them uh, both at once because the fuselage is, I think I've worked it out, around about 90 millimetres wide. Now these blocks of foam are only 50 millimetres or about two inches. So what I'm going to do is put two together, hold them together with some double sided tape and the foam cutter is going to cut them both at the same time. So those parts there are for the front section and this, this here is for the uh, rear section which we're going to do the same. So what we'll do is we'll show you the, the foam cutter working and cutting them out. I'll probably time lapse them as well because it's, uh, it's not the most exciting thing to watch foam being cut. And then what we'll do, once we've got them cut out, we'll then put them together and then we'll use the foam cutter to actually get a bit of shape to the uh, foam. So what we'll do is we'll start putting some lines on and we'll use the foam cutter. And on the foam cutter there's a thing called slice. Uh, it's basically just a macro that send some g-code to just uh, send a foam cutter wire straight down and we can use that to get some shape on the on the fuselage which will make things a little bit easier when we come to do the um, the actual final build um, what i'll probably do as well i'll i'll show you the wing uh, I've cut, i'm not going to show you the wing being cut because i've got quite a few videos on it anyway showing you how to cut wings but what i'll do is i'll show you the Wing. The wing's going to be about 1.2 metres or about, what's that in the, I think it's about 40 inches, something like that. No, a bit more than 40 inches, about 44 inches. That's going to use a Clark White aerofoil. So, uh, but what I'll do at the end of the video, I'll show you, the, I'll show you that. So, uh, so without further ado, what we'll do is I'll get this set up and we'll show you the fuselage is being cut out. So guys, I've got the foam blocks set up and I've got some weights on them um, as well as a bit of double sided tape as well but once the wire is set correctly it should cut it no problem at all so what we'll do we'll load the code in that line there is just from me positioning the uh, the wire so I've got the wire set at um, two millimetre up and two millimetres forward and then I've just zeroed it all. So uh, we'll switch the wire on and just double check make sure it's hot with a piece of foam. Yeah, definitely working. And then what we'll do, uh, I've already checked the code with the check, with the check option, so uh, there was no errors, and it's a good thing to do that. So if you just press check and then hit the run and it will run through it. So I think what we're going to do is run it and see what happens. Keep an eye on it, mate. There we go, it's going into the phone now. So once it's gone in a little bit, it should start going up. And I'll speed this section up, guys, because it's not the most interesting thing to watch. So 
if we come up back to the entry point that we set in Fusion 360. There we go, at last. <laughs> right, let's switch the wire off. I'm just going to switch the motors off, make it a bit quieter. Right, so let's have a... Let's have a look and see what we've got. I'll make it about 230 millimetres exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's not, so, not too bad. Don't throw these bits away, guys, because these will come in handy for when we're going to shape the sides. So what we'll, we'll put it back in, and then we'll put some measurements on them, and then we'll do some side shaping. So that's the first part of our fuselage. So that's going to be tapered a bit at the front. And then, obviously, once it's all made, I'll be cutting some some of the foam out inside to, for batteries and motors and stuff, but yeah, so uh, quite pleased with that. So I'll just put the rear section on the time lapse because it's not the most exciting thing to watch. And then when that's done, I'll, we'll come back and have, have a look at it. Right, I hope you enjoyed that little time lapse. So let's take it to bits and have a look. <laughs> right then guys, see if we can get you a good view on this. Let's see how they do. Now this is the first time I've done it, so I'm quite intrigued. Well, look at that. I didn't think it'd be that good. That one looks just as good as well. So there's a fuselage. <laughs> I'm quite impressed with that. So what we're going to do in the next section, we're going to put these together and probably going to have to do it in parts, but what we're going to do is going to give it some shape. So we're going to use the foam cutter and the foam cutter's got a slice option. So all we'll do is we'll line the... Move that out of the way. We'll line the section under the wire, and then we use this option there called slice. And then that just takes the wire straight down. So what we'll do on the drawing, I'll get out the drawing and uh, show you the next section how we're gonna get this a, a little bit more shapely. Right guys, so in this next section, what we're going to do, we're going to actually slice the fuselage a bit thinner. So we're going to make it a bit more shapely, if you like. Now, from part two, uh, we did dimensions, and I've got to print out the dimensions here. And what I'll do is I'll put one up on screen as well so you can see it. So these were the dimensions we got in the, in the dimension section of the part two video. So what I've gone along and done is marked out all the parts to these dimensions. So I'll just show you some of the... It may be easier to see on this one. So what you can see there, I've gone and marked the lines out on where the transitions are and on the On the front sections here so I did make a mistake along there I was going to end up with two two right sides I think <laughs> so uh, luckily I found that before we went on so what we're going to do we're going to set the foam cutter up so we'll, I'll get it lined up and ready and I'll sh show you the slice function in operation so we'll do that bit next <laughs> 
Right, so guys, I've got the first piece sat on here. This piece of foam at the bottom is just to support it because we can't get the wire going right down to the bottom. And what I've actually done is I've actually pinned, used some small uh, pins just to keep the wire. I've used some small pins just to keep the uh, foam onto this block. So the block's on some double-sided tape so it won't move. So all we need to do now is position the wire. And then what we'll do then is we'll then... Uh, run it down to the bottom so let's bring it forward so we're going to use some jogging here so jog distance and we'll do 100 to start with because the wire's right at the back so we're going to come forward 100 I'm going to come forward forward 10 I think to start with so what we need to do now is get this wire lined up right so now we're going to go on to the individual axis. That looks about right there. About right there. Just go back again on the X. So it does take a little bit of time to get it just right. Just one more forward on that. Yeah, I don't think that looks too bad. set the temperature and see how it goes I've used this method before guys but never on a piece quite this tall so uh, we'll just check the wires hot with a bit of foam And all we do now, if I've done anything right, we run this slice routine. So we just click on slice here, and that should just take the wire down. So let's give it a go and see what happens. So what should happen when it gets down to zero, it will I think you're just gonna catch a pin there. So when we slice that bit. So that bit's gotta come in a bit as well. Yeah, so it doesn't look too bad that. So obviously when I build this, I'm gonna be putting uh, putting some uh, strengthening uh, longer ons, I think they're called, 
in there to strengthen it up. And I will be covering it in my favourite um, method, which is brown paper of PVA, which makes it really strong. You've probably seen some of my videos on that. So that didn't go too bad. So what I'll do, guys, I'll not show you all the others being cut because it's not very exciting. What I'll do is I'll get all the others cut, and when they're all cut, um, I'll come back to you and show you what it looks like and what the next stage is. Well, guys, as you can see, I've finished the slicing, and it hasn't gone exactly right. <laughs> the front sections have come out fine. So... Have a look. Look there, they they look okay. So we've got a, a little bit of a tape on the front and a little bit of a tape on the back, and you can see where the slicing has happened on on there. So that's worked out all right. The rear sections, if you see, you can probably see we've got one thicker than the other. Now I think what's happened is I've got my measurements mixed up or I've gone the wrong side of the line. So uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to remake them. Uh, although this, you, you probably could get away with it. Um, so if you, if you put them on, I'll get it all together without dropping it off. make it work but um, I'm, I'm not happy with it so what I'm going to do I'm going to re remake these rear sections I mean it's only foam and a bit of time so what I'll do is I'll re remake them and we'll we'll come back to you when that's when that's done uh, and the other thing I'll do is I'll get the wing made as well so guys I did remake the parts that uh, didn't come out very well in the previous section so I'll just show you the difference so this was the original and when you can see the the tail in there it's quite um different so we've got a thick one and a thin one and here they are remade so you can see there they look pretty good now so that they're, they're looking but uh, both the same size and then They, they line up just as well as you can see and if you can see now we've got um, we've got quite a good bit of shaping on the fuse well, obviously there's a lot more to do on yeah. it it's a, it's a good start so the, there'll be strengthening uh, longer ons going in there so obviously I need to cut out some of the foam inside for batteries and motors I had considered um, just chopping the nose off and uh, 3D printing one. Uh, I might do that, I might not. I'll just see, see how things go on that. Um, you know, see how much effort it's going to be uh, using Fusion 360 to do that. But um, So we're probably going to have a part four video of this, but it's going to be quite some time off because, uh, you know, once I've done this, I've got some other projects on, I need to get on with quite quickly and I'll, I'll sh show you them uh, uh, towards the end of this video. Uh, one of them you might be quite interested in as well. So there's the sides. And this was the original one we did in part one. So you can see there's a, there's a big difference in, in size, but that was just a proof of concept. And this was making the real thing. And potentially if you wanted to make a small, small version of it, you could use this. And then what I've also done, I've created the wings and these have come out really well. Now I use DevWing Foam 2 to do that, but you could use any of the free softwares to do them. Um, probably Wing Design is probably about, probably the easiest to use. And, uh, and all I've done in here, I've put a, um, I've put a, hole in, a hole in there so we can run some servo wires up. And then this, this section here is for a spar. And I've got some, um, I've got some spruce or uh, wood I can use for the spar and that's a uh, I think that was five millimeters wide by 12 millimeters deep and so that that's going to go in there and um, and if we have a look at the wing section on there you, you see it lines up absolutely spot on 
Uh, so we're going to have to have some... So there's going to be a little bit of work to do around the back here, so I'm probably going to bring something across here. If you look at the L4 Cub, um, I'll, I'll put a picture up of it as well so you can see it. Um, so this tends to come across flat because all this section on the Cub is, um, is like glass, you know, because it's an observer type plane, but um, probably going to do something, use some um, silver paint or something over there to give the effect of glass. So it just shows you what's possible with Fusion 360. Um, if you just want a fairly simple fuselage, something like a, an L4 Cub, or not even a fuselage. So if you wanted to do something else in foam, like probably even a boat or a, or some lettering, you know, you could use use the method I outlined using the post processor in which we started off with in part part one, um, and then went on to part two to show you how you, we could do both. And uh, yeah, so. I'm quite pleased with it all and as I've said I'm going to be putting this to one side for a little bit and I'll just give you a sneak peek of the uh, future projects coming up so we'll have a look at that in the the last bit of the video. So I hope that's been useful to you on this uh, part three showing you how to actually cut the parts and if you're wanting to make a, a foam cutter then check the channel and also on the website because um, it's not that hard to do and quite a few guys have put their own interpretation on the phone cutter as well but you can just see the opportunity it gives you to make things that you you want to make now it's all very well buying these uh, kits online and that and you know you see loads of these unboxing videos on and, and sometimes i look at them and how much they cost and i think all that for a piece of foam and obviously there's a lot of development and you know the companies have got to make money out of it but so I don't buy models anymore guys I, I prefer to make them and you know researching them and doing your own designs just opens a whole new avenue to the hobby you know if you're into that type of thing I mean I know some of the guys at our flying club they just like to fly yeah they're not into building but uh, I enjoy the building side as much as the flying so that that's why I do this type of thing now you're probably looking at this here thinking what, what what's this all about if you look on my channel, I have a few videos on this. This is my uh, CNC router, uh, which is based on the Open Builds router, and it's uh, from a company called Ooze Nest. Now, I've had this for quite some time, and I've got some videos up on the channel. And probably one of the most most popular videos on the channel is um, how to use Linux CNC. Uh, I think it's approaching 100,000 views, which for uh, for my channel is quite a lot. So. I haven't been using it for some time, uh, mainly because I've been using this 3D printer down here. What I've found is most of the things I need now, I can usually do it with my 3D printer. And I had even considered selling it, but um, I knew I'd regret it if I did. So recently I was looking on a site called Jetworks Online, and they produce some really um, amazing plans for um, part jets. Uh, but what they've done, they've taken it to the next level. Uh, and they use a lot of 3D printed parts now and there's some awesome, I'll put a link up there, I mean if you want to have a look at some awesome part jets that are quite easy to make, you know, um, there's, there's some amazing stuff on there. But one of the things, that if you've ever done any part jets, you'll know that cutting the f f foam out can be a bit tedious. So I thought, is there any other way to do it? And I stumbled across a site where they use a needle cutter uh, basically it's it's this type of thing it's like a it's like a sewing it's like a sewing machine <laughs> get that a bit closer so you can see it it's a very sharp needle that spins around and it's got a brushless moat and that so the plan is to put it onto this uh, CNC router you probably can't see that too well at the moment it goes on this side here but the problem with this is this was running on the old parallel port interface. So what I'm gonna do, and that's why we've got all this here, I'm gonna convert it to USB using uh, the MKS board with external drivers. And this part here is ready for the next video to do, do the bench test of everything. So that's what the, the next video is gonna be. It's gonna be a two part video. The first part's gonna be about converting this to USB from the old parallel port. And then the second one is gonna be uh, doing the needle cutter um, 
And there's a guy that's done quite a lot of work on it. He's called Edward RC. You might have seen some of his videos on YouTube where he cuts out all the uh, plans, you know, using this, and it, it seems to work really well. So that's going to be the next video. So I'll also be doing, I'll be making that forward swept wing, which I showed in one of my previous videos. Um, all the parts are just, <laughs> just up there waiting to be glued together. So, uh, so that's going to be, uh, I'm going to be doing that probably at the same time. Um, but I need to get this finished because it's taken up a lot of space. This normally doesn't live in here. Uh, it normally goes in my, in my workshop outside. So uh, I need to get this finished and out of the way and then, uh, you know, we can start getting on. So uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, keep a look out for the next video and I'll catch you in the next one.